Hello everyone, welcome to chapter 8. Um, in chapter 8 we're going to be looking at solutions and different types of reactions that occur in a water environment. And in this first one we're going to look at something called molarity, which is a concentration value, and we're going to do some calculations using um, concentration um, from a known amount of substance per a known volume of substance. So when we mix things together in water, um, and you can use other things as, as solvents, okay? Solvent is what you have the most of in a solution. A solute is what you have the less of, okay? So you can use other things, but water, we call water the universal solvent because so many things will dissolve in it. And so a homogeneous mixture is a solution and the solution will have a minor and a major component as I said a solute in a solvent. Solutions are usually um, quantified okay and so we can tell you like what how much of something is in something else um, or, or we could just generally say um, they're dilute or concentrated which obviously dilute means it's a low concentration so a small amount of solute compared to the solvent or a concentrated solution where you have a large amount of solute compared to the solvent. So one of the most common ways to express concentration is called molarity. And molarity, you may have seen this on containers. If you've been in a lab, you'll see 1.0 capital M and that's a 1.0 0.0 molar solution. The molarity of that solution is one mole of solute in one liter of solution. So molarity by definition is the amount of solute in moles divided by the volume of the solution in liters. Solution means the total. So if, and I told you before that a solute plus a solvent equals the solution. Lots of S words, okay? So notice that this is per liter of solution, which means it's everything. It's divided by everything. So how much solute in moles per liter of solution? Okay, so if we want to calculate molarity, I told you that it is moles of solute per liter of solution. I told you, told you solute is the least amount you have. Solvent is the most. And then solution is both of them, right? So, and it tells me I've got 25.5 grams of potassium bromide in enough water to make 1.75 liters of solution. That means I've got 25.5 grams of KBR, which is my solute. In or divided by 1.75 liters of solution. Sorry about that. My dogs are having a fit for some reason. Um, okay, so now that gives me a concentration. That concentration is grams per liter, okay? But what I want is molarity, and molarity is defined as moles per liter. So what I have to do then is I have to convert that from grams to moles. And so I'm going to look up and see that KBR, when I, when I put, when I, look at the periodic table, that turns out to be 119 grams per mole. So I've got grams of KBR here and I've got to get rid of that. So there's 119 grams of KBR and one mole of KBR. That's bromide. Okay, so if I can go back, I can now cancel grams of KBR I have liters on the bottom, which is what I want, right? 
and so I now have moles over liters. So now all I have to do is the, is the math, and I'm going to get 0 0.122 moles of KBR per liter, or 0 0.122 molar. So that is the molarity in moles per liter when you have 25.5 grams of potassium bromide in water and you fill it all the way up to 1.75 liters. So that's how you calculate molarity by concentration. So I'll give you a couple of practices on these because I want you to be able to do it. Now remember, you've got, if you've got milliliters, you're going to have to change it to liters. If you've got grams, you're going to have to make that into moles. And remember, if you have a molarity here, that's the same thing as saying 1.5 moles of KBR per liter, per one liter of solution. All right, so you always want to go ahead and translate that up front so you don't forget that that's what molarity is by definition. So because of this, and, and molarity is so many moles of something per liter, we can use that as a conversion chart, a conversion chart, a conversion factor when we are trying to convert things, okay? And so I can go between liters and moles or moles and liters when I'm trying to figure something out. For example, if I have a 0 0.5 molar sodium chloride, I know that for every one liter of solution, I've got 0.5 moles in there. So if it tells me that I have another amount of moles or I have some grams or whatever, I can use that concentration to actually find out how much I have. If I'm going to prepare a solution, if when I do that, I'm going to measure out a mole of sodium chloride. Now, do you have a mole scale anywhere? No. You have, to, you have to measure mass, okay? That's why we have to go back and forth between moles and mass. So, but I can calculate how many grams there are in one mole of sodium chloride. So I can measure that on a, on a balance. I can put my 58.44 grams of sodium chloride, which is one mole. And then what I do is there's a little mark here on this, and this is called a volumetric flask. And in this volumetric flask, there's this line, and this line is exactly one liter, or whatever size it is. This one is one liter, okay? One liter or a thousand milliliters, right? Same thing. And so you fill it up with water after you put the solids in there. The water goes in until you get to that line, and then you have exactly the 58.44 grams of sodium chloride in one liter, otherwise known as one mole of sodium chloride in one liter, otherwise known as one molar sodium chloride. So how many liters of a 0 0.125 molar sodium hydroxide solution contains 0.255 moles of sodium hydroxide? All right, so in this particular one, I'm given, I'm given a concentration, which is a calculated value, and I'm given 0.255 moles. So I know that I have to start my dimensional analysis with 0.255 moles because that's the only measurement I have, okay? So 0 0.255 moles of sodium hydroxide, and I want to know how many liters of a 0 0.125 molar sodium hydroxide solution has that many moles in it, all right? So to calculate this, I know that I'm going to have to get rid of moles of sodium hydroxide. What this told me was that I have 0 0.125 molar sodium hydroxide. 
And since I talked about this earlier, I know that that means it's 0 0.125 moles of sodium hydroxide in one liter of solution. So the concentration of this is 0 0.125 moles of sodium hydroxide in one liter. So when I put, put that in there, that gets rid of moles of sodium hydroxide, and I'm going to be left with liters of sodium hydroxide, which is what I'm looking for, and that should be approximately 2.04 liters of sodium hydroxide. So molarity helps us going from a measurement that's in grams or, or moles to a volume. Kind of reminds me of density a little bit. Okay, so there you have some practices. Remember your four more practice is always going to be a little bit trickier. So just make sure you start with your measurement, not your concentration. All right, and that will be it for using molarity in calculations.